Hello friends, I am here today to share with you a guide to Rebecca Yaros books. Um, Rebecca Yaros is one of my most favorite authors and so I see her books a little bit around on booktube um, but I kind of want to push them out there a little bit more. Um, so she's got some series and some standalones. Um, I'm going to start with the ones that I consider the standalones. Um, there is one that's in a series, but that's a whole thing that I'll explain in a minute. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So these are the ones that I have that I consider standalones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and explain the whole series thing first. This one is Muses and Melodies. This is part of the Hush Note series, um, but books one and two are... Serena Bowen and Devney Perry, and this is book three. Um, this one is Nixon and Zoe. Nixon is the guitar player for the Hush Note Band, um, and he is suffering from some addiction issues. Um, and he's had a lot of negative press, and I think he's been late to a couple of gigs or signings or something. Um, and so their management company assigns Zoe to be kind of his handler almost um so I think at the beginning she like goes to his apartment and she realizes that there's a lot of the negative a lot of negative things that contribute to his addiction at his apartment um and so he suggests that they go somewhere else and she is kind of like no we need to keep you close so that if the gig comes up, if the signing comes up, if recording happens, you're close by. Um, and he actually ends up surprising her and taking her to her hometown because she mentions that um, it's been a while since she's been there. And so they kind of hide out in her hometown um, and spend a lot of time together and fall in love that way. The first actual standalone that I want to talk about is The Last Letter. And this is actually the first book that I read by Rebecca Yaros. Um, I believe this came out in 2019, so that would have been the first time that I heard about her. This one is Beckett and Ella, and this is a very emotional book. Um, Beckett had been deployed with Ella's brother, um, and Ella is a single mom living in Colorado. Beckett was deployed with Ella's brother, and her brother ends up um, getting killed in action. I didn't know of a nice way to say that. Um, so... The thing about the last letter is every soldier writes one and gives it to, I guess, their commanding officer. And that commanding officer gives it to whoever should they die in combat. Well, Ella's brother's last letter was to Beckett asking him to check in on her, make sure she's okay. Ella is raising her twins alone. Um, one of her kids has cancer, and so she's been dealing with a lot of medical stuff. Um, and so her brother just really wants Beckett to be there in his place to help out should she need it, um, kind of give her a shoulder to cry on, that kind of thing. So Beckett leaves. I don't think he, like, dis maybe he discharges. I don't remember for sure if he discharges or if he's just on leave. And he goes to where Ella lives and meets her, but doesn't quite tell her why he's there. Um, they had been kind of pen pals exchanging letters, um, but he doesn't tell her that that's who she was exchanging letters with. Um, so it's a bit of a hidden identity type situation. Um, but yeah, this is very emotional. Um, I would send a trigger warning for loss of a child. Um, I don't want to go too much into that, but yeah, it does have that in there and it is kind of a heavy part of, or kind of a big part of the end of the book. This one is about Camden and Willow. Um, Camden and his younger brother were both deployed and his younger brother um, got killed in action. And so when Camden returns home, the story that was kind of spun about how his brother died um, kind of painted him in a bad light. And so there's a lot of survivor's guilt, I guess is what you would call it, but also other people dealing with their own guilt say some things that are not the best. Um, so Camden leaves and then six years later has to return to his hometown 
Um, and there he sees Willow and who was actually his brother's girlfriend. Um, but he had always kind of had a crush on Willow, I guess would be the easiest way to say it. Next up is Great and Precious Things. Um, this one is another really emotional military romance. And Willow is, she's trying to find how to go about getting her own life back because she's always just kind of seen as the dead soldier's girlfriend. And they were on their way to breaking up anyway, which is something that no nobody besides her knows that they weren't really in the place that it looked like they were in to everybody else. So everybody else expects her to be heartbroken and never be able to move on, but she's ready to move on. And then when Camden comes back, she's a bit surprised to find out that that's who she wants to move on with. Um, she had a little bit of a crush on him first, uh, but then she met his brother and started dating him. So uh, the, kind of a second chance, kind of a first opportunity First missed opportunity, second chance. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, but yeah, this one is another super emotional one. That's a theme with Rebecca Euros. The last standalone that I have here is The Things We Leave Unfinished. This one is Noah and Georgia. <sighs> Georgia is the granddaughter of a very famous romance author. Um, and when her grandmother passes away, they find this half-written manuscript um, that her publisher and George's mom want, they want to find somebody to finish it. So they kind of contract Noah without Georgia knowing. Um, Noah is kind of a doom and gloom romance author, like a Nicholas Sparks type where he doesn't really write a happy ending, but a lot of people consider it a romance, that kind of thing. So... I think one of the only reasons that Georgia agrees is because she doesn't think that the story has a happy ending anyway because she and her grandmother were very close and she thinks if the story would have had a happy ending her grandmother would have been able to finish it would have been able to write it on her own because I think it had been sitting for like a while before the grandmother passed um but Noah wants to try to prove that he can write something different and so he wants to give the story a happy ending and Georgia doesn't want it to have a happy ending. She thinks that it has a tragic ending. Um, and so it's them kind of figuring out that the story is the grandmother's story. Um, yes, I love this book. This one is still my favorite by Rebecca Eros. I love this book to pieces. If I could force you to read any book in this, it will be this one. Okay, so next we're going to talk about her Flight and Glory series. There are five books in this one. These are all kind of, they start out new adult and kind of move more into adult romances. Um, they are military. There are a lot of really emotional things that happen in them. Um, so book one is Full Measures. This is Josh and Ember. Um, at the very beginning of this book, Ember's family finds out that her dad um, has been killed in action and... Um, it kind of sends her whole family into, like, her mom is obviously very depressed. That's the love of her life. Um, her siblings are kind of young teenager, and I think one of them is not even a teenager yet. Um, so it kind of sends them into a spiral of acting out, of not knowing how to feel. Um, and Ember kind of takes it upon herself to really keep the family together, really try to be strong for everybody. Um, but then she en ends up meeting Josh. He is a hockey player at, I want to say at the, like the rink that her little brother plays hockey at. Um, he's maybe the coach. I feel like he was the coach now that I'm thinking about that. Um, anyway, she ends up meeting Josh and kind of uses him as her own shoulder to cry on, as her own build up to keep her strength. Um, and then finds out that he is also in the military. And so it's kind of a, they kind of have to work through that. She's got to overcome her fears of turning into her mom and ending up with that same knock at the door. And yeah, this one is a good start to the series. It's definitely not my favorite, but I do think it's a good start to 
kind of the friendship group that this story centers, that the series centers around. So next one is Eyes Turned Skyward. Um, this one is Jagger and Paisley. So Jagger is in flight school with um, Josh from book one. Uh, now they're in... I want to say they're in Florida or Alabama. They're somewhere in the south now. They're not in Colorado anymore. Um, and one day at the beach, Jagger sees this girl, like, jump off of a pier into the water. Uh, or, no, she gets pushed off of a pier into the water. And it looks like she can't swim. So he uh, swims out and saves her. And then once they get to talking, it's Paisley and... Uh, she kind of has this bucket list that she's trying to complete because she has a heart condition that has, uh, just recently the same condition has killed her sister, her twin sister. Was it twin? No, it just says sister. Um, so she has a heart condition and so she and Jagger kind of start to hang out and complete these bucket list items. Um, and then Jagger starts flight school and realizes that his commanding officer is Paisley's father and his biggest rival in the class is Paisley's boyfriend. Yeah, so a lot to work through on that. Next up is Beyond What Is Given with Grayson and Samantha. Grayson is also in flight school with Josh and Jagger. Um, due to some things in his past, he's very focused on school. He studies a lot. He always makes sure that he's at class early and making sure he's getting stuff, everything done. Um, and then he gets distracted by Samantha because Samantha needs a place to live. She's gotten kicked out of her school in Colorado um, and her mom is deployed. Um, I think she's Ember's friend. Uh, so somehow or rather the friends decide that she's going to live with Grayson and even though he's really distracted, even though he's really focused on school, he becomes very distracted by her. Um, and they spend a lot of time together, obviously, because they're living in the same house. Um, and it kind of becomes him. One of my favorite scenes in this is there's a reason that she was kicked out of, not a good reason, but there's a reason she was kicked out of her school in Colorado. Um, or that she ran away from her school in Colorado. And she decides to go back and face it. Um, but Grayson, she doesn't want to ask Grayson to go support her because of how focused he is on school, but he ends up going anyway. It's one of my favorite scenes in this whole series, but yes, I, this one is my favorite. I don't think I mentioned that. I love this one. It's my favorite of the series, but I do think you have to read books one and two to get to that one. This, I don't think this is a series, especially the next one that you can read without knowing what's happening. <laughs> Which brings us to Hallowed Grounds, book four. Um, this one is Josh and Ember again. Um, this one is them. Uh, Josh has finished flight school. He's got his military assignment. Um, Ember is finishing up her college degree and they are moving in with each other. They are planning a wedding. And then they find out about a deployment. Um, and weirdly, it works in a ro it works in a romance book series, but I don't think it works in real life. All of the guys in the series end up going. Um, so yeah, if you watch my flight flight and glory series vlog, um, this is the one that had me crying in the middle of the night. So yeah, spoiler. I think it's the, I think that video has spoilers, but. I'm not going to spoil it now, but this one is, I was going to say the worst book in the series, but this one is the most emotional book in the series. If you need to cry, this is the one for you. But like I said, you need to read the others to really know. I think you need to read the others to really have a connection to the characters in this one. And I don't really know how to talk about this next one without spoiling a lot of the things that happened in the series. But the last one is The Reality of Everything. This one is Morgan and Jackson. Morgan and the girls in the rest of the series have been, are really good friends. Um, but she's really been going through grief. And so she buys, or she comes into possession of a beach house in the Outer Banks. And when she goes to check on it, 
realizes that it's going to need a lot of work and decides that maybe that is how she needs to deal with her grief. Maybe she needs to throw herself into fixing up this beach house and that's what she decides to do. And then she meets her neighbor, Jackson, who is a single dad. Morgan really has to work through a lot of her own issues because Jackson is also a pilot and she's kind of seen the dark side of that. So that's the easiest way I can describe this without spoiling absolutely everything. Next up, I'm going to talk about her legacy series. Um, these are also super emotional, but they are not military. They are firefighters. Um, so the first one is Point of Origin. This one is Sebastian and Emerson, and this is a second chance romance. They were together when they were younger, and then a wildfire completely decimated the small town where they were from. Um, both of their parents had... I think both of their dads had been firefighters um, and were killed in the fire. Um, and so S Sebastian left. He couldn't deal with it, but Emerson, Emerson really stuck around and she wanted to help rebuild the town. Um, and now I think it's six years later, um, Sebastian is back because he and his friends who are also the children of those original firefighters, want to start up the Hotshot crew again. Um, a lot of the older people in town are really against it because of what happened already, and they don't want to see it happen again. So Emerson, I think she works for the mayor or the town council or something. Um, she agrees to help uh, Sebastian and his friends put together a presentation that like puts it in the best light of reopening the Hotshot crew. And while they spend a lot of time together doing that, all of their feelings are revisited. Next up is Ignite. This one is Avery and River. River is one of the sons of the original Hotshot crew. And he and his brother have been living in Alaska since everything happened. Um, and Avery is his best friend. She's got a younger sister that she takes care of because their dad is an alcoholic. Um, he became an alcoholic after her mom passed away. And so Avery really feels tied down to Colorado or to Alaska, sorry. And then River finds out that he and his brother are firefighters anyway in Alaska. River finds out that this opportunity in Colorado is open and he really they both really want to honor um, their parents' legacy and legacy series. That's what the whole thing is. Anyway, um, he decides that he wants to go to Colorado. Um, and so he asks Avery, will she go for the weekend while he goes to house hunt? Um, and he kind of, on the trip, kind of tries to, um, ease her into the idea of them being together, of her coming to Colorado with him. Um, and it's a, it's a very short novella length story, but it packed in a whole lot of, I guess a whole lot of build up for the friends to lovers. Um, and so far the only book that is out in the series that is a full length book is Reason to Believe. This one is Knox and Harper. Um, Knox is one of the firefighters. Harper is one of the other firefighters, younger sisters. Knox and her brother are were very close growing up. Knox spent a lot of time at her house. Um, she's always had a crush on him. He's always also had a crush on her, but due to his best friend, like, setting that boundary, he never made a move. Um, Harper knows that Knox is moving back to town, um, and she becomes the very quick foster parent to, she runs a preschool, she runs she becomes a very quick foster parent to this little boy that's in her class and his like baby brother. Um, and asks she asks Knox if she can use his house um, because there was something wrong with her apartment. It was getting work done on it or something. Um, and he agrees without really knowing why she's asking to use his house. Um, and then when he shows up, she's there and the two little boys are there. And she's trying to figure out a way to be able to keep the little boys and so um he offers to marry her so that it would seem a little more stable of a household um yeah 
So it's a marriage of convenience. I forgot where my train of thought was going. Uh, it's a marriage of convenience. They get married so that they're able to adopt the children. And finally, the last series that I want to talk about today is the Renegades series. Um, this one is not super emotional like all the other ones are. Um, I feel like military and firefighter are a lot more, um, a lot more intense than the Renegades is a kind of like an extreme sports romance series. Um, they are athletes, but more like X game type athletes and not like a basketball player, a football player, that kind of thing. Book one is Wilder. This is Paxton and Leah. Um, Paxton is part of the Renegades team and they are setting off on a worldwide cruise tour. Um, but they are in college. These are new. I would consider these new adults. Um, they have to pass all of these classes while they're on the cruise in order to um, be able to participate in the worldwide stunts, if that makes sense. And Leah has signed up for a study at sea program and doesn't realize that the program she signed up for is actually to tutor Paxton so that he passes all of his classes. <laughs> Um, so it's forced proximity. They're on a boat going around the world. They have these extreme stunts. Um, they're spending a lot of time together working on his schoolwork. Book two is Nova and this is Landon and Rachel. Um, so this one is a second chance. Um, kind of before he became this famous athlete, um, Landon, they call him Nova, um, They, the like lore around him being an extreme athlete is that this girl broke his heart and so he does all of this extreme stuff because no amount of pain, no amount of like if something went wrong, no amount of anything that could hurt him would hurt as bad as when this girl broke his heart. So Rachel actually ends up on the Worldwide Cruise Study at Sea program thing as well um, and they both know what happened. Um, it It's kind of a... If I remember correctly, it's kind of a miscommunication. Like, he thinks she broke up with him and she thinks that he broke up with her. Um, and it's not really what it seemed at all. So, yeah, this one is a second chance romance. Um, and then finally is Rebel. This one is P Penna? Pina? I don't know how to say her name. Penna. Penna and Cruz, we're gonna go with that. Um, they meet like before the worldwide tour starts. Um, they're in Vegas. She convinces him to do something base jumping. I feel like Oh yeah, they they end up going base jumping and having a one night stand. And then when they get on She's on the worldwide tour and in one of the stops that they make, um, this new professor comes on to the ship and it's Cruz, the guy she had a one night stand with. Um, so it's a bit of an age gap, not a lot because it says he's the young professor. Um, but yeah, this one is a one night stand second chance and um, a professor student because she is in one of his classes. So I completely forgot about this series. This is one that she wrote with Jay Crownover in book one, Girl in Love. Um, the female main character needs a date to her step siblings or to her stepsister's wedding. Um, so she meets this guy and they go together and they have a connection. And then in book two, Boy in Love is his return from deployment where he still really feels a connection to her and wants to look her up and they reconnect that way. So those are all of the books that I have by Rebecca Yeros. There is another one coming out. It's probably already out by the time I get this video up, but I don't have it. It's in another series with Serena Bowen and um, Devney Perry. But yeah, that's what I have so far. Um, which of these books are you most interested in? Please let it be uh, The Things We Leave Unfinished, if it's anything. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all next time. Bye.